Good morning. I'm Steve Jensen. I'm the great-grandson of Denmark Jensen, and he is the guy that built this cabin in the month of June of 1884. Now, I have started this uh, 21 years ago, and I'm still restoring what he did, what he built. But the people ask me, where's the name Denmark come from? Looking at the history, come to find out his parents, Mads Christian Jensen and Marin, were the first Danish Mormon converts. They got on one of these ships that came to the United States. There were so many converts back then that they would rent, uh, lease a whole ship and go from England around to here to the United States. And I always thought that they came into New York, but they didn't. They came down to, to, to New Orleans. And so they came in there in, in uh, let's see, 1850. And they mentioned in their diary that they buried one of their children at sea. At this time, Marin was pregnant. And so they got in there to New Orleans, went up the river to hit the Mormon Trail, and then they headed west to get to Salt Lake. Well, July 24th, 1853, at the Elkhorn Crossing on the Missouri River, Marin gave birth to a baby boy. So he was the first Danish Mormon born in the United States. And so what are they going to call him? But they call him Denmark. Well, what it was is he was a pretty religious guy. And one thing is, it's right when he went to get married, he went to his dad and said, Dad, Lucien and I want to get married here. Denmark had been trained to be a, a grain miller. He says, we want to get married, and his dad says, well, fine, you and Lucine are welcome to live with your mother and I, but let me tell you, there's one boss per household, and that's me. And so he moved out, they went and moved with her parents, and he, her dad was a lumber guy, and so he learned the lumber business. So he was running around, and back then, you know, the, the sawmill would be here, and then it'd be there, and it'd be there, it'd move all the time. And so he had been up here and was up in Rexburg, and he was not just doing a lumber job, but also working on a um, canal, irrigation canal. And that's how, back then, you got your water rights, is by working on a canal. Well, at this time, the church down at Salt Lake had found out about Chesterfield. Chesterfield was not one of the places that the church sent, but this was just a local bishop, bishop take, come up here, and so he was getting all of his buddies to, to move up here and homestead. And so, and he says, this reminds me of Chesterfield, England, where this guy had been on a mission. So he said, okay, you guys are out here homesteading in the valley. We've got to live in a city. And so they called Denmark out of Rexburg to come down here and to run around and get all these people to move into town and for the new people coming to build here in town. Well, he did that and that wasn't too successful. Nobody was going to tear their house down and move to town, you know. So, uh, this would be the June of 1884, so he built this cabin. And that's back when, it only took one month, that's back when everybody came to help, you know, building a, a cabin. And so, they, the church figured out, okay, he's not that successful getting people moved in. So they sent him on a mission down to Box Elder in, in Utah. after. He had been here, let's see, it'd be June, July, or after he'd been here four months. But that's how he got here, was the church sent him here to get everybody put together. 
the cabin here it's really pretty fancy. You know, there are different buildings around. Some are brick. Those are really fancy, but we had a brick yard right over here. They made the bricks right around this corner right here. So you had the rich people and then the medium people and then the poor people. These would be the medium people. So upstairs is a sleeping room that's the exact same size as this room. And that's where the kids slept. The baby would sleep in here in what I call the master bedroom. Sleep in there with mommy and daddy. And then when that kid got old enough to climb up the, the ladder over here, and believe it or not, she kept getting pregnant every time, you know, for 11 kids. But that was standard to have that many kids. And this was fancy for them. Uh, you just slept a whole bunch. I don't know, remember when I was a kid there was a song, roll over, roll over, we all rolled over and one fell out. You know, and they'd get out of bed, run around the other side and jump in, you know. But you were sleeping under a roof? That was pretty nice. Also in the winter time, we had people living in tents and, and dugouts. They would come and live with them. So it wasn't just 11 kids. There, you know, there'd be 20 or so in this house. But that was part of life back then. After you put those boards in, and if you kept mopped and wet, then the boards would be tight together and you wouldn't have the mice and bugs come crawling in. They had to mop the floor every day. And this was my grandpa. He was my grandpa Parley. He was four years old when 1884 when they moved in and he had to stay here and help mommy mop the floor every day. And that was woman's work and it really hurt him to have to do woman's work when the big boys are out with dad on the farm, you know.